Hello, this is a Chapter 3 lesson. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to talk about how to measure or quantify the extent of disease. Now, we're going to use this term disease here a little bit loosely. Uh, disease could be thought of as just anything that's, that's bad for your health. And so we're going to uh, first talk about how to measure uh, the extent of disease. And then second, we're going to talk about how to compare uh, the extent of disease in different populations. And so we're going to have lots of different definitions in this chapter. And, uh, and distinguishing and keeping the, these different definitions straight is maybe going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, uh, but we'll try to summarize things here at the end. Uh, a lot of these definitions we're going to see come up in our journal readings uh, throughout the semester. So first, let's start off with our first definition, uh, prevalence. Uh, prevalence is the proportion of participants or people with a disease at a particular point in time. And uh, so uh, specifically we're defining here what the book calls the point prevalence. And we can calculate that by taking the number of persons with the disease divided by the number of persons examined at baseline. Now this term baseline we're going to see come up a lot uh, in the book as well as our journal readings. And the, the term baseline has kind of maybe different meanings depending on the context, but kind of informally we could think of uh, baseline as simply the, the total number of people. So to illustrate this idea, let's look at this data from example 3.1 in the book. Uh, and this gives us some results of, um, uh, of cardiovascular disease and gender. And so we went out and we surveyed a total of 3,799 people. Uh, 3,400 of them were free of cardiovascular disease. 379 of them had a history of cardiovascular disease. Uh, 1,700 of them were men. Uh, 2,000 of them were women. And this tells us that uh, 1,500 uh, men were free of cardiovascular disease. 244 men had a history. Uh, 1,800 women were free and 135 women had a history of cardiovascular disease. And so let's look at calculating uh, uh, different uh, prevalences of cardiovascular disease. So first of all, let's calculate the overall prevalence of cardiovascular disease. And so we're going to take the, the total number of people who developed, uh, who had a history of cardiovascular disease, which is 379, comes from right there. And we're going to divide that by the to overall total number of people which is uh, the 3,799. Uh, we do that arithmetic and we get this number and then we often convert that over to a percentage. So we have just about uh, just under 10 percent of uh, people in this uh, in this uh, sur survey had a uh, history of cardiovascular disease. So that's an overall prevalence. Now we might be interested in just the prevalence in of cardiovascular disease in the different genders. So we could calculate the prevalence of cardiovascular disease in men by taking the number of men who have cardiovascular disease, that's the 244, and divide that by the total number of men, which is the 1792. We do that arithmetic and we get 13.62. So 13% of men in this survey uh, have a history of cardiovascular disease. Likewise, cardio prevalence in women is we take the total number of women who developed cardiovascular disease, which was 1350, or excuse me, 135, and divide that by the total number of women in the sample, 2007, and we get there about 6.73%. So in this survey, about 6.7% of women uh, have a history of cardiovascular disease. So we could think of a prevalence as meaning percentage or also as, as a proportion. A proportion is simply the decimal equivalent of a percentage. Okay. Now let's look at this graph here, which is used frequently in the book uh, to describe uh, what happens to participants over the length of a study. And uh, so in this, in this study here, we have five different uh, participants, and this study lasted a total of 10 years. And so let's look at this participant number five, first of all. Uh, so we could think of maybe uh, the, the people in this, uh, in this study were examined maybe every year. And at the end of the fifth year, or uh, the, uh, this uh, fifth uh, participant developed cardiovascular disease. 
Uh, this fourth participant was free of cardiovascular disease the entire 10 years. Uh, this uh, third person, uh, he died after six years. Uh, this person here developed cardiovascular disease after about nine years. And this first person was uh, free of cardiovascular disease over the entire length of, this, of the, survey, or the study. Okay, so let's kind of su summarize what this graph is telling us. So at zero years, or at the beginning of the study, we had five people total, zero of them had cardiovascular disease. At five years, we had four, five people total, and one of them had cardiovascular disease. At 10 years, we had only four people left, and a total of two of them had developed cardiovascular disease. So let's calculate different uh, prevalences of cardiovascular disease at different points in time. So the prevalence at baseline, or the start of the study, is we had five people total, zero of them with cardiovascular disease, so the prevalence is zero. The prevalence at five years is we had five people total, one with cardiovascular disease, so one-fifth is 0.2 or 20 percent. So at that point in time, we had 20 percent of our participants with cardiovascular disease. And then the, likewise, the prevalence at 10 years is we had uh, four people total in our survey left. Two of them had developed cardiovascular disease. So we have 50% prevalence at, uh, at 10 years. Okay. Now our next concept is what we call cumulative incidence. And incidence is not the same as, as prevalence, and we'll, we'll uh, kind of summarize the difference here in a bit. But cumulative inc incidence can be defined or thought of as the likelihood of developing disease among persons free of disease who are at risk of developing the disease. So it's going to be a likelihood, or, or you could think of it as a, as a probability, but I think it would be better to think of it as a likelihood of developing disease uh, among those who are at risk. And uh, here's our formula, or definition of cumulative incidence. Um, we'll develop, we'll uh, denote it CI. It's the number of persons who develop the disease during a specified period divided by the total number of persons at risk at baseline. So let's illustrate this uh, again with this graph uh, that we just talked about. And so specifically, let's look at what happens at the end of five years, where we had uh, five people total, and one person has developed cardiovascular disease. And so we could say the cumulative incidence at five years is the, the total number of people who developed cardiovascular disease, which is one, divided by the total number of people who were at risk at the baseline. So we'll assume that all five of these people were at risk, and so we have one-fifth which is uh, 0.2. Uh, so uh, at, after five years, we had a total of 20% of, of our participants developed cardiovascular disease. Our next concept is called the incidence rate, uh, abbreviated IR. Incidence rate is similar to the cumulative incidence, but a little different and a little more complicated. Uh, so the definition here is the number of persons who develop a disease during a specified period divided by the sum of the lengths of times during which the persons are disease free. And so we see here that the numerator uh, of this definition is the same as the numerator for the cumulative incidence, uh, but the de denominator is much more complicated. It's not just the, the total number of people who are disease free at the beginning, it's the sum of lengths of time during which the persons are disease free. So to illustrate this, let's look at the same uh, figure that we've seen before where we've got these five people who are being observed for cardiovascular disease over a total of 10 years. And so let's calculate the incidence rate for these five people over the span of 10 years. So the numerator is the total number of people who developed the disease, which was two. We had person five and person two develop cardiovascular disease. Now the denominator is the, the total amount of time that these five participants were disease free. So this first person, he was disease free for the entire 10 years. So we have 10 there. Second person was disease free for nine years. So we had nine. Now this third person didn't develop cardiovascular disease, but this person died. So this person was disease-free for six years. 
uh, person four was disease free for all 10 years and then uh, d d person five was disease free for five years. So that's how we get that denominator. That's the total amount of time that these participants were disease free. And so if we take two divided by this sum, we should get 0.05. Now, we often report these incidence rates as, as instead of a percentage or, or a decimal, I should say, uh, instead of as a decimal, we move the decimal point over, uh, like in this case, two places. And so we'd report this as saying that we have five per 100 person years. So we could interpret this as saying, uh, suppose we had 100 people, uh, and over the span of one year, we'd expect about five of those people to develop uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. Now let's look at a, another set of uh, data that summarizes the results of a, uh, of a study um, regarding uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, and, and this one we, we track um, we track both men and women. And in this study, uh, we had a total of 190 men who developed cardiovascular disease and a total of 119 women who developed cardiovascular disease. Now, we don't know the total number of people in this study, but that's okay. It doesn't matter when we calculate uh, uh, <clears throat> incidence rate. And let's suppose that out of all of our men in the sample, they were disease free for a total of 9,984 years. Now it doesn't mean that the study lasted that, that long, but if we take the, the number of years that the first person was disease free plus the number of years that the second person was disease free plus so on and so forth, we get a total of 9,984. Now let's suppose that the women in our study were disease free for a total of 12,153 years. So let's calculate uh, different incidence rates. And so the incidence rate of men developing cardiovascular disease is we'll take the number of men who developed cardiovascular disease, which is 190, divided by the total amount of time they were disease free, the 9,984 years. And we, uh, when we get this small decimal, 0 0.01903. Now, to report this number, we might move this decimal point over one, two, three, four uh, places. And so we'd report that as saying that we have uh, 190 cases of cardiovascular disease per 10,000 person years. Why do you say per 10,000? Well, in order to get that number of 190, we had to move the decimal point over four places, so we have one followed with four zeros. Okay. Now, likewise, we can calculate the incidence rate of women developing cardiovascular disease in the same way. We take the total number of women who developed cardiovascular disease, 119, divided by the total amount of time they were disease-free, the 12,000 years, and we get this uh, small number here. And again, we might uh, uh, report that as a whole number by moving the decimal point over one, two, three, four places. And so we get about 98 per 10,000 person years. Okay. Now, let's uh, take a step back and talk about what these different definitions mean uh, and, and compare them. So prevalence is the proportion or percentage of people who have a disease at a point in time. So the key words here are have and point, the percentage of people who have a disease. The cumulative incidence can be thought of as the proportion or percentage of participants who become diseased during a specified period of time. So notice the difference here. This is have and this is become, and this is at a point in time, and this is over a period of time. So, and then the incidence rate, we could think of as the instantaneous potential to change from non-diseased to diseased per unit of time. So it's a measure of the likelihood of developing a disease. It's not a percentage or a proportion. It's a, it's a, think of as a likelihood to change from one to the other. Okay. So informal comparisons, uh, we could think of prevalence as the chance of having a disease and an incidence is a chance of getting the disease. Notice the difference there. This is having versus getting. This is what has occurred right now at a point in time, 
and this is what might occur in the future. So prevalence deals with right now, the incidence deals with uh, what happens in the future.